Well, these schools get funded primarily through the amount of property taxes in the community. Uh, they also get their funding based on their test scores and their attendance rates. But the main factor is pretty much the wealth of the community and the, the property values or the, um, even more accurately the taxes of the property. For the most part, the majority, almost 70 percent of CPS schools are in middle to low income communities. Um, uh, well, our funding is low. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told that I wouldn't be brought back to the school because uh, of the dropout rate. Uh, my second period class, I think I had seven students today out of like 22. The morale is low. Uh, there's not a lot of positive reinforcement, I don't feel. I think the food in the lunchroom is horrible. Uh, you know, nachos with cheese every day is not a good diet for a poor child that might not be getting a meal at home. No control over the hallway, kids running up and down the hall, fighting every day, lunchroom, gang banging. Uh, the stuff that we're teaching now, the freshmen, stuff called Carnegie Tutor, I don't think it's effective, I don't think it's helpful. Education is the key to changing these trends in the neighborhood, I believe, because the better education that they have, then the less likely they are to turn to the streets. The teachers are going to teach regardless of what they're paid, regardless of anything else, because we go into teaching not for the money. We go into teaching because of a love and a passion and desire to see students succeed and to grow and to, to become lifelong learners. So regardless of what the government does, we are going to continue to do our jobs, but we could definitely use a little help. <laughs> and any extra funding would be a source of, of help to us. Well, Talking about school books and materials, I know a, a school where in the budget, instead of asking for new books, they ask for duct tape to tape the books back together because there's no money to get new books. Um, there's schools that I've been to um, recently going around teaching where they had the exact same English book that I had in seventh grade. And they but they need more computers, if you ask me. There isn't any classes really that are focused on computer education, teaching them how to go on the internet and find things that are going to be helpful other than just learning where the websites are for music and things like that. I think what people have to understand about funding is it's not just a funding issue, it's a social issue. You have poor um, low educated people living around other poor low educated people with no hope in sight which leads to no hope they raise children with no hope and they go to poor low funded schools with old outdated materials computers that are much too slow to be in 2008 I think if you wanted to make a change beyond just protesting and, and doing rallies and screaming with signs, which are great, I think we need to do that. I think more people even need to realize that this is an issue and say something about it. Excuse me. I think you need to join up with people that are actually doing something about it, the movement that has started. So you have movements like A Plus Illinois that are fighting for school funding reform. We're, um, like I said, we're a coalition of hundreds of different groups, so, um, our main goal is to reform the way that schools are funded, also to improve the quality of Illinois schools. And uh, the way that we aim to do that is to pass comprehensive legislation that would increase state revenues for schools and also um, create new standards for school quality. And um, right now there's a bill in the State House called Senate Bill 2288, and that bill would increase the individual and the corporate income tax which would pr produce new revenues that would, go, that would go to schools. It would also provide property tax relief to homeowners who currently pay the majority of school funding costs. I mean, when it comes down to it, it's 
our state leaders who are responsible at the end of the day for changing the system and for saying every child can learn, every child deserves the opportunity to learn. We need to fund schools in a more equal and a more fair way. But then when I say we, it means, you know, I'm a voter. It's, my, it's also my responsibility to call my senator and call my representative and call the governor and say, you need to do this. You know, you're in Springfield representing me. Well, our website is uh, aplusillinois.org. It's all spelled out. And we have a sort of a legislative action center where you can, you can contact your state representative or, or the governor or your, your state senator. Um, we have links on our website to other organizations that are active in this issue. Um, we tend to take the lead in terms of organizing the outreach to the legislators, but um, there's groups that we work with like Mikva Challenge, which they, they, they organize students in high schools to become active politically and active civically. Um, so that's a great resource for high school students looking to get involved, who are in the public school system at the time, to go to their elected officials and say, you need to look me, look me in the eye and tell me why you can't fix this problem now, why I have to go to a school that's underfunded, that you know we can't afford the books in the, in the AP classes that we need to get on to college.